this video is gonna be a little bit different. I normally show you my smart home and automations all built out, but I don't always show you the tech that I use along the way, mainly because this tech wasn't specifically built for the smart home, but I use it every day to control and build out my automations. And I'll show you how using this makes my life easier, so setting up my smart home never feels like a chore. All right, let's start off first with some ways that I control my smart home, including right here with my wrist. So this is the Galaxy Watch 4, and it's pretty inexpensive, but I like it because I can put the Home Assistant app on here, and I did it kind of for fun to see if I would use it, and I actually use it all the time. You can put some favorite scenes or automations scripts that you wanna run, and so I'll use it, I'll just swipe up, click on the scene to change my lights or run an automation to start up the theater room or something like that. I seriously use it way more than I thought I would. I also have Google Assistant on here, which they recently added, and you can use just your voice to activate it, or you can hold down a button to talk to it. And it's nice to be able to control smart home devices without shouting across the room and just talking straight into your watch. Play Bluey on YouTube on the Nest Hub Mac. That worked, yes. Another thing I like about having a smartwatch is all those smart home notifications, like a picture of who's at your front door from your video doorbell, or an actionable notification with a button you can just press right on your smartwatch to run an automation. It's super convenient, and I have some really cool automations coming up soon, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And a couple other things I like about this smartwatch, it's very light, like way lighter than my Apple Watch, and the battery lasts a long time, like two days or even longer without needing to recharge it. I also added this band, which is pretty comfortable. It's super inexpensive and I got it on Amazon. I'll link all of that down in the description. But it's great to see that even if you have an Android phone, there's still some really good options for a smartwatch. Speaking of Android, I'm using the Pixel 6 Pro right now. And you've probably heard about how amazing the camera is on this thing, which is true but what often gets overlooked is how good this is at controlling your smart home. Say you wanna quickly turn on a smart home light. Well, the Pixel 6 Pro is extremely fast, so it's snappy at opening up that smart home app and allowing you to control the device, which I love. Also with Android, they allow you to add these little tile buttons to the control notification dropdown menu, and you can even add these for Home Assistant. So I've added some for some scenes or automations to run, and I use these multiple times a day. I've also never been a fan of big phones, but after using this, I like how many smart home devices I can see on the screen without needing to scroll, which comes in handy. Oh, and one other thing about this phone, the fingerprint sensor on the screen kind of gets a bad rap, and I had issues with it when I first started using it, but I found a really good solution for it and you can apply this to pretty much any fingerprint sensor in your smart home. So when you register your fingerprint, you do it twice, which you probably already know that, but you do it once pressing softly on the screen and then another time pressing firmly on the screen. And once you do that, it works so much better. So when it comes to the smart home apps on my phone, they basically fall under two categories. One that I use on a daily basis and others that I might use a couple of times a month. So if you're watching a video and you're like, hey, what's that dashboard or what app is he using? It's almost always Home Assistant. Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant. The app lives right there on the dock of my phone because almost all of my smart home devices are in Home Assistant. So if I need to turn on a light or control a device, I know I can go straight to the Home Assistant app and find that thing. But there's some devices that are in Home Assistant that I need extra functionality for. And that's where the other apps come into place, like reviewing camera footage or controlling my robot vacuum. And I can use it for things like when we were on vacation recently, and I'm not gonna say who, but someone thought they left the refrigerator door open, so I had to use the robot vacuum app to drive over the robot vacuum using the onboard camera and see that the refrigerator door was actually closed. Even if you're not using Home Assistant, you can still use other apps like SmartThings or Hubitat 
to combine a bunch of your smart home devices into one place and kind of declutter your phone from all those smart home apps. Now my favorite device in managing my smart home is a tablet, preferably an iPad mini. And I use this thing way more than my phone around my house because of all the extra screen real estate to see my smart home devices. And if I'm working on an automation, I can see so much more of what's going on. I debated about getting an iPad mini because I've used the iPad Pro in the past. And that thing is a beast, especially paired up with a magic keyboard. I can crank out automation so fast on that thing. But I wasn't using it as much on the couch. And so I got the iPad mini and now I use this thing all the time. It's so comfortable to just sit on the couch and manage my smart home. It's just a lot more fun. To me, that's very important with my smart home because I don't want it to feel like work. If I'm sitting at the desk, it feels kind of like a chore. Where if I'm working on my smart home using my iPad mini, it's just super enjoyable. I love it. I have a really cool case on it. The cover snaps on with magnets. And then if you want to hold it and make it a little bit lighter and less bulky, you can just pull it right off. It has like little grooves for the Apple Pencil so it stays in place and doesn't slide off as easily. So I love the iPad mini. If you've ever thought about, should I get one of those to control my smart home? Yeah, I highly recommend it. When I am doing smart home work on my laptop, it's serious business. Nothing breaks my focus because I'm in the zone. Oh, Dad, she hit me. Oh, great job, kids. Good job. Keep it up. I don't always work on my smart home using my laptop, but when I do, it's so much faster. I can open up multiple browser tabs of Home Assistant, and that way I can reference older automations that I've created. And when I'm making the new automation, I can make similar actions and I don't have to relearn how I did it. And I can even copy and paste the YAML code actions to the new one. And I know that sounds scary, but it's really easy. All you do is view YAML code, copy and paste to the new one, and then you can still view it in UI form in the new automation. So it's easy and it saves so much time. I also have a lot of really cool tech in this room that helps me be motivated and inspired in making smart home automations. I like this picture frame up there on the wall. It's a Game Boy Pocket. And it's not a picture of a Game Boy Pocket. It's an actual Game Boy Pocket device that's mounted in that frame, which is pretty awesome. And I used to play the Game Boy Pocket when I was little, so I love seeing that on the wall. And it just reminds me of how much I've loved tech even since I've been little. And there's a company that actually makes these. They take a bunch of old retired tech and they frame it. They do an amazing job. So if you're ever looking for a good gift for somebody that loves tech that might have everything or, you know, a gift for yourself, this would be it. I also have a floating light bulb and pen that I think just look amazing. And of course, a bunch of smart home lights in here. And if I ever feel like I'm in a rut, I love coming in here to work on my smart home or YouTube videos, which I have some awesome camera equipment that I make YouTube videos with. And if you ever want to see like a studio tour, then let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Dad, why didn't you show my iPad in the video? Ooh, I guess I can. All right, let's take a quick look at this thing. This iPad actually has a feature my other iPads don't. It's a thick layer of grime on the screen. It's so thick that I don't even think it feels like glass anymore, but it does make it extra grippy. And cleaning it isn't too bad. You just grab your little plastic chisel and go at it. And what's really convenient is if you're hungry, you just dig around the case a little bit and you might find some food. Hey, look, a fruit snack. My kids are constantly drop testing it to the point where I think they want to break it, but apparently it can't because this iPad is seven years old and it won't die. Most likely it will outlive me.